One of my favorite things about Touch Designer is how many little tricks and techniques you can learn over the years. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the text top because I always see people asking about, you know, is there a way to make text layouts easier? Do we go with a web rendering? Do we go through some other kind of format? But actually, there's a couple of really interesting things we can do with a text top. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few text tops here. And you've probably seen some format of setup like this where, you know, maybe you're making a data visualization or a project that has some data displays like the weather and you have a lot of different kinds of text. So let me say I've got a Monday here, I've got a Tuesday, and then this is going to be the temperature on Monday, which let's say it's 10 degrees and the temperature on Tuesday is 15 degrees. And then you want to find a way to composite these things together and already we can see this is going to be kind of annoying to control. And if we had a seven day forecast, we would have seven different text tops for the days, seven different text tops for the uh, temperatures. We'd have to go down and make seven different text tops, maybe if we had conditions or anything else like that. So it already doesn't scale very well. And we can see that this becomes very cumbersome because if we start doing something like using over tops, for example, as our way to composite everything. So let me make a constant top here as my background. And then let's actually set this to something like 1000 by 300. And then I'll scatter my text throughout this in some form of layout. So the first thing I'm going to do in my over top is turn off the prefit overlay from fill. We can see that's stretching out my text here. And I'm just going to set it to be native resolution. And then I can go ahead and start middle clicking and dragging, maybe put Monday on the left side. And let's move it up a little bit. And then we continue doing this, you know, and this becomes a very tedious process for anyone who's ever worked on these kind of infographics or data displays where you essentially have to keep chaining together these different translates just to try and get some semblance of a layout together. And I'll quickly go ahead and put these last pieces together here. Just a chain of overs. What a thing to see here. So let me move this down to zero and I'll move this to negative 0.2 and this should be zero. So at the end of the day, we have something that looks like this. Now there's something really cool we can do with the text top, which is actually inside of the text parameters, there's something called a specifications dat. And the specifications that is really interesting because what we can do is make one single text top and actually drive all of the different kinds of text rendering and positions from a table. So if I was going to recreate this layout, I'll make a new text top here and I'm going to make my table dat. This is going to be where I'm going to put all of my different specifications. And then at the end of it, I'm going to put a null just because I know I'm going to show you some extra tricks that we're going to put in between this table and the null. So if I go to my text top here, I'm going to delete the text that comes with it and I'm going to drag and drop my null one onto the specifications dat parameter. It's going to give me some warnings that I don't have the right headers, but we can do that very quickly. So I'll activate my viewer here. I'm going to make two extra columns so that we have three columns in total. And then I know that I have four pieces of text that I would like. So I'm going to add four extra rows. And the way the specifications dat works is that you're going to define three different columns here. The first one is going to be named text. The next one is going to be named X and the next one is going to be named Y. And you do have to use these specific headings. If you have one mix missing, you're going to see if I put you know, something like X position, the text top's going to give me an error and say X column does not exist. So we do have to use this naming convention of text, X, and Y. But now we can see there's no more error inside of my text top. And what I can do is start taking these pieces of text and just putting them in my first row of the column, my first 
column, I'll put them in all the rows. So in, in this case, I'll put Monday here, put Tuesday here, put 10 here, and 15 here. Now I can already see something interesting happening as all of these different kinds of text are getting rendered actually at the same time inside of a single text top. So the really cool thing is instead of having to make one different text top for each one of my little bits of text, I can actually put all of them and have them be all rendered individually inside of a single text top. Now we can see right now they're all kind of in this bottom left corner because we don't have any X or Y positions specified. So the cool thing becomes now, instead of needing to make these four text tops and then four different overs that place each piece of text on the canvas, I can go ahead and say, okay, well, I have a resolution of 1000 by 300. So let me set my text top to be 1000 by 300. And the cool thing is I'll set this to my background and now I can start editing pixel positions in these X and Y columns. So let's say, for example, I try 150 and let's say this is going to be also 150. Looks like maybe 200 is, is a closer area. So I'll set the Y on Tuesday to also be 200 and maybe this will be 500 over. And then similarly, I know that my 10 here is going to be probably around 150. Uh, looks like we can go a little bit more. So 175. 185 and don't worry I'll show you a trick to make this much easier very shortly but let's enter in some numbers by hand here because you still can fully operate this by hand if you wanted to and let's say this is going to be 525 So what's really cool is how easily this scales. Now, I know this is not exactly perfect. You know, you could spend a little bit more time to make sure these are the right pixel positions and all that kind of good stuff, but you can already begin to see the power that instead of having to make four text tops, one constant top, four different overs, having to control their translates independently, I can have this one table with text down the first column and then X and Y positions in the next column and the single text top will render all of those in the right position for me. Now there's two other tricks that are really good to have in mind for this. One of them is that, you know, this whole process of having to manually type numbers into the table, you know, especially if you're working with a designer and they're like, oh no, one pixel to the right, one pixel to the right. You know, if this can become a very tedious process. So oftentimes what I like to do is create a set of chop controls that then I can reference inside of this table and then have that be the outcome of it you know it'll get evaluated and then sent into my text top so the first thing i'm going to do is make a constant chop and i'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of channels here so i know that i'm going to need x and y positions for all four different pieces of text so that means eight channels now I can go ahead and just name these. So I'll name this uh, maybe X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3, X4, Y4. And you could definitely go ahead and name these a little bit better than I am for this example. But for now, it's all right. So I'll go ahead and put a null chop after that. Now there are many different ways that you can reference these values inside of the table. One way could be to use something like an evaluate dat in between the table and the null. So if we were gonna do that, what we could do is let's go ahead and right click here, click insert operator, put an evaluate dat. Now it's gonna give us an error because by default, the evaluate dat takes everything inside of a table and treats it as if it was Python. Now in Python, there's no you know, variable named text X or Y. So all of these actually have to have a set of quotation marks around them so that the evaluate dat realizes that these are strings that we want. And you see, once we have our strings inside of quotation marks, all of a sudden the evaluate dat, no error, and we're getting the same output that we had before. Now the cool thing about evaluate that is that then I can go inside of each one of these cells and actually replace it with a Python expression. 
So for example, I know the X and Y position of my Monday are gonna be X1 and Y1. So I could type right in here, op, open and close a set of parentheses, open and close a pair of quotation marks, and don't worry, I'll make this bigger very shortly for you. But I know the operator is gonna be called null two. Oh, and then the last thing I want is channel zero for the X1 and channel one for the Y. So op null two, one. So we can see here op null two, zero, op null two, one. This is going to get the references from X1 and Y1. And that's where the evaluate tab becomes really cool because just by putting these expressions into this table, as they pass through the evaluate that, it's going to evaluate the Python and leave the value for me here. So then I could come to this x1, y1 chop channels that I have, and all of a sudden, now we're cooking with gas. We can see this is so much easier to use, so much quicker to maneuver than if we were kind of doing it manually by entering those values in a table. And you could very much do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy this for all of these other text items, but instead I'll just keep incrementing their channels. So that's gonna be channel two, that's gonna be three, this one's gonna be four, five, six, and seven. Now once I did that, because all of these channels were zeroed out, then I'm gonna to have to just redo this very quickly, but you can already see so much easier, so much faster than if I was trying to do this in a table by editing those values. Now, one other trick that's really good to know about is actually kind of making up for a little bit of a shortcoming that the specifications dat has, which is that the specifications dat really can only handle the text, the X and the Y. So if we wanted to, for example, have our 10 and 15 be italics, or maybe Monday and Tuesday are, are bold and these are italics, we can't really specify that kind of formatting inside of the specifications stat. It's an unfortunate reality, but there are some ways around it because it's still even better because in most cases, you're gonna have you know, a very minimal amount of styles. You're gonna have some regular text, you might have some italics text, you might have some bold text, and maybe you have one or two different sizes. Now, even if we were to try and do that with individual tops, we would end up with so many tops. And then the problem because that becomes that we're gonna have to do calculations for where different pieces of text go, that can become a little bit tricky. Now, I find that using the specifications that we can essentially make one text top per style that we need. So let's say, for example, that this text top is going to be our Monday and Tuesday and it's gonna be italic. And then we're gonna make a second text top that's just gonna be our 10 and 15 and that's going to be bold. So I can go ahead and copy my text top, copy my little tables here, and then just start removing certain elements. So I can say, okay, well, for my first text it's gonna be Monday and Tuesday only, so I can get rid of the rows that have the 10 and the 15 in them. And then I can go ahead and set this to be italic. We can see it's italic here. And let me get rid of some of these extras. Now I can go ahead and set up my bold text style. So I know that I don't want Monday and Tuesday in there so I can cut these rows out. And then I just have to make sure we can see this reference line is still going to the Monday and Tuesday. So I wanna make sure I'm referencing this new null that I have here for my 10 and 15. Then I can set this to be bold, and then I can very easily composite these two together in a composite top or an over top or anything like that that's similar. So I'm just gonna switch this operation mode to add for now. And we can already see, even though having different styles, it's already going to be so much more streamlined, so much cleaner than if I was going to do each one of these separately. Especially once you start considering what happens if this scales. For example, if you wanted to add a condition for each one of these, like sunny or cloudy, you know, boom, two more text tops. If you wanted to add all seven days to this, all of a sudden you'd have to grab these, you know, copy and paste them again. That gives us four days. That gives us six days. We can already see this is getting a little bit out of hand 
And then, you know, this would be essentially seven days of a forecast with a condition and a temperature. And we haven't even gotten to the part of doing the overs yet. But if we we're going to do it with this, all we'd have to do really is just keep appending rows. So we could say, okay, well, when this day goes here, we could then create some chop channels to control it. You know, Thursday goes here, Friday, et cetera, et cetera. The same here. We could have our conditions, you know, it's 20, it's 35, 30. And then we can make more chop channels to control where those get added. But then essentially you're always just going to have a number of text tops really that's equal to the number of different stylings you need. And if you're working on a simpler project that doesn't have too much stylings, this can be a really, really easy way to combine all of your text rendering into one single text top. So enjoy. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.